Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to add and align a camera to your laser engraver using Lightbarn. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the purpose of the camera that I'm talking about is for alignment, not for video recording of the engraving projects. For that, you can use any camera, place it uh, over to the side and you're good to go. Now, there are two reasons why you might want to have a camera for alignment. Uh, now, the first one is for ease of alignment of your workpiece. So, uh, you will put your workpiece into the engraving area and then you can use the uh, camera uh, within the software and you can align it to the actual uh, frame. So that is going to be, say, orthogonal or however you want it to be. But most importantly, this will help you out to optimize the utilization of your material. And I have an example here. This is a piece of scrap that I've used to cut out uh, violins and guitars. And as you can see over here towards the center, I have this area where I know that I can fit a guitar. And in fact, I have one here. Let me show you. So the guitar fits nicely over here without big problem. The issue is that if I want to do the alignment normally without the, the height of a camera, I can still do it, but it will be a little bit of a pain because I will need to test trial with the jog tool and to make sure that the various points, uh, for example, on the uh, shape that I want to cut, uh, they are going to be inside of the area and so that I'm going to launch an engraving or a cutting job that is going to be right. So with the camera, once the camera is aligned, this will come very easy. And then the second reason why you might want to have a camera is that you can do what is called print and cut, for example. Now, Lightbarn has a print and cut feature which doesn't use a camera. It's using a completely different approach, but you can actually make it much simpler using the height of a camera. Most importantly, you can put whatever you want under and you can trace it. So for example, you can uh, put a sketch or a drawing or another piece of cut material. You can try to recover um, stuff that, uh, for example, were failed during the cutting process. So you can do all a bunch of things using this trace tool. Now, uh, for the purpose, you can use pretty much any camera. I ended up using a webcam. I have one of those cheap Logitech camera over here, webcam, and it's working just fine. Uh, if you have a GoPro, I haven't tried it, but I think that there should be no problem. Now, Lightbarn claims that not all of the camera will work fine, but I think that majority of them, as long as they can connect through a USB, uh, they will be good to go. So any cheap webcam will do the job. And then you will need to place the camera overhead, so on top of your engraving area, and you will need to try to be as centered as possible. So try to be dead center. If you have some marking which defines the center will help you out with the initial alignment. And then the height must be enough so that you are uh, inside of the field of view, of the angle of view of your camera. And what I recommend you is to try to get the camera a little bit higher than that so that you can avoid the great distortion that you normally get at the edge of the image sensor. So if you go a little bit, you have more space, then you have more flexibility also for the uh, process that I'm about to show you. As a fixture, you can simply put the camera on top, the webcam, however you like. Now, if you have some fancy uh, photography equipment or vlogging equipment, you can use that as I do it uh, here in my studio. But otherwise, and that's actually what I'm going to show you, for this demonstration, I've created an L shape piece of wood. This is a scrap timber. I just cut it out. I made this L shape and I'm going to fix it to the machine using wood clamps. So 
just to show you how easy it is. Now, once you set up the camera and you do the alignment, you don't want to move neither the camera nor the engraving area, the machine. And so for this reason, the best is to actually fix the uh, support or the harm that is holding the camera or the webcam in place directly to the machine. In fact, I'm now uh, designing an actual like universal stand that I can use for all of my camera, for all of my uh, machines, because they're all different in size and different in uh, profile, uh, so that I can basically easily swap the webcam when I need to in the machine that I want to use. All right, now let's jump over to the PC and I will show you exactly how to do everything. All right, here we are in Light Barn and now we are going to set up our camera. Now, the first thing we want to do is to go over to the camera tab over here on the right. If you don't see this tab, then you will need to go under window and to check it. Here we go, camera control. Now it's already checked, so it's showing over here. Now, once we are in the camera control, uh, we need to select our camera and this will show us the preview. Now, if you see that uh, if you have an autofocus uh, system in your camera or webcam, um, just touch it a little bit until it stops doing whatever it's doing, and then you are basically good to go. Also, in this phase, it's good to try and relocate the camera in order to grab the entire engraving area as you can. And so I'm going to do that now because I want to move here over to the right on the screen or to the bottom on the machine. All right, so now I'm uh, seeing the both supports and the main axis. So I'm sure that I'm actually looking at the entire engraving area. Now, uh, there are two things that you can do. Uh, if you go over here under laser tools, and by the way, this is available only in the latest update of uh, Light Barn. So if you haven't updated yet, I would highly recommend you to do so. Or if you don't want to update, you simply go over to tools and under tools, it was here somewhere to the bottom where you could find the same settings. So now here you have calibrate camera lens and then calibrate camera alignment. Now, um, as you can see in the view here, I see no distortions whatsoever. I've eventually done already the calibration myself, but it is not a fish high type of lens in this uh, camera, so there was not much distortion. However, if you are going to use a camera with a uh, wide angle lens, like a fish high, uh, you will most probably get distortion due to the lens. And so in that specific case, you might want to run the calibration. Now, I will show you how to do that, even though I do not need it. So we'll go over to laser tools, calibrate camera lens. Now it will prompt you to select the camera and then whether or not you have a fish eye lens or a standard lens. In my case, I have a standard lens. And so I'll go on next. Now, uh, this is where the things get interesting. Um, the software will basically need to uh, figure out a way to understand what's the level of distortion and then to apply the actual uh, transformation, correction, so that the uh, image is rendered uh, without distortion. You will need to download uh, the pattern that you see here on the picture. So go over to this link and then control save or command uh, control s or command s and i have it already so i'm not going to save that so i'll give it on cancel then we can go to see the file so over to the explorer and there we go calibration circle now an important thing here is that you will need to print out this image not as a full letter or a4 sheet but it's going to be either A6 if you are in metric or a quarter of a letter size sheet. 
because uh, at the beginning I printed out like this and I basically uh, filled out an A4 page and that turns out not working and so then I had to try and print it smaller and so then it worked out so um, so you can either give control P uh, actually I got some problem here it's not working anyway so let's do it over here from share print there, there we go and as you can see the size is already there however if you happen not to have this paper and so your printer will basically not output it uh, what I did is simply open a new word file and then come over here grab this into word and so this will uh, give you the exact scale which is in the uh, metadata of the file if you want to go over to picture and give a slight border so that then you can crop that out so you have the right size and once you're ready you should get something like this all right once you're done with printing um, you can uh, you will simply need to follow uh, over here the preview and so right now it's asking you to place it to the center and so I'll do that right now okay so I'm pretty much to the center and then I'll keep I'll uh, uh, click on capture now this will perform an evaluation and here it's explained that the score should be less than 0 0.3 so our score is 0 12 which is great and so we can click on next now don't get bothered about the actual distortion that you see in this picture here it's not important so next now you will move accordingly so to the bottom of the machine bottom center actually and then capture again right capture all uh, right as you can see I have here the cable on the way so let's clear that off all right let me capture again there we go and now I will fast forward ahead I will simply need to follow this All right, as you can see, we are done. We had to try all of the corners and the uh, uh, center edges. And so now we can go ahead and to do the alignment. Now, if you want, you can simply follow from here, align camera. Otherwise, you can go back to the laser tools. You will find the same. So let's follow it from here. Again, selecting the camera, give on next. Now, this will prompt you to um, engrave something so this will help the software identify the position where it's engraving and to try to align the camera with it to transform and to do all a bunch of uh, stuff in the background so um, this is going to be a 200 times 200 millimeters uh, shape or 8 inches it says over here and it doesn't need to be cut it simply need to be engraved so you will need to provide uh, a material that has a good thermal response so that it can get uh, dark enough for the purpose and over here you can also set the speed and the power for both the fill speed and the line speed and then uh, you will also need to include this is very important the material thickness because then once you input the material thickness the software will be aware on what was the plane where this has been engraved and accordingly will be able to actually correct for that offset plane and give you the actual coordinate for the uh, zero plane which is like right now it's my uh, sheet of uh, uh, play wood over here all right I now started the machine I will actually close this up for the moment so that I can connect to the machine 
Atom stack, there we go. All right, so like this I can also show you now where to find this alignment. Under laser tools, calibrate camera alignment. Again, select the camera. Next. And so we are on the exact same uh, wizard. Now, try to um, put the settings so that you can get a good dark result. Now, if you have a test for the material that you are going to use, that's going to be very handy. So grab that up. And so I'm going to do uh, 3000, uh, say 80% for my fill. And then uh, um, 2000, just to go a little bit slower. 70% for the line, then the material thickness I'm using a 5 millimeters cartoon alright so the other thing that uh, you can do is to use the scale so if for example you happen to have a smaller machine than the 200 times 200 you can apply a scale here in my case I'll leave it to 100% and when I'm ready I can click on frame and once you're ready with everything you can simply click on start all right so once you're done uh, make sure without touching anything have a look to your uh, engraving and make sure that everything is dark enough so that it's visible um, if it's not the case, you can pass one more time, just change the parameter and pass one more time. Now, I noticed that my number three came a little bit lighter, but that should not affect the overall result. So let's click on next. Now uh, the machine is prompting you to move the uh, axis away from the side of view of the camera. So I will push it all the way up, as you can see over here and remove this cable out of the way so if you have any, anything that is on the way of the dots just make sure to be away now in all of this you have to make sure not to bump the camera or the table where the machine is and not to move anything absolutely and so I will now click on capture image now, the image will be captured, then we will simply click on next. Don't be bothered about the distortion. Now, what you have to do is to basically mark each one of these uh, uh, markers, okay? Following the numbering. So first with number one, then two and three and four. All right, so try to be as precise as possible. Locate the center and double click. Now I will do this. Uh, purposely wrong so if you do it wrong you can do you can click on undo last and so now you can repeat over here it's not very visible but I hope this will not make any problem there we go so once we are ready you can see that this is a little bit a strange shape is not exactly a rectangle or a square actually supposed to be and so now the the software will perform a matrix transformation so that everything lines up perfectly so we'll give on next and we are perfectly good to go now what we can do to see it over here in the canvas we can say update overlay we can also remove the fading option so that we can see it all and so now this is showing us the actual area. Now, unfortunately, um, I didn't align the camera perfectly at the beginning. So I have a little bit of cropping here. So in this specific case, I will need to redo the process of alignment only because I'm actually out of view. Uh, but for the time being, I will now remove this piece. I will put 
a random piece and I will show you what you can do with it. All right? All right, I've just placed the sheet of material uh, that I would like to cut a piece from, so I'll update it. And now, what I want to do before to actually go ahead and uh, uh, do any job, you, I want to verify the time on the right spot because sometimes you have some uh, small misalignment still. And so I will uh, use the jog tool to move to some point, for example, I will move it over here. Okay, I'll actually zoom, I will do it again to be more precise. By the way, if you want to see this crosshair which shows where the laser is, actually, the last position is over here, you need to toggle this show last position. And I will also go to the move and click on the fire button so that I can see the laser. And I'm going to check now if the laser is on the spot. All right, it all seems to be uh, good in place. Um, I just want to verify further, so I will go to another spot over here. Again, untoggle and retoggle the fire. Check again if the laser is right. And so it all seems to be good to me. Now, if there was a little bit of misalignment, that means that the point where you go is not exactly where you want it to be. Uh, you could go back into um, the camera control and you can use some offset. Now the offset should move opposite to where the point is because you're basically trying to say that the view and so the piece is offset, not the laser. So you have to uh, speak in terms of the work piece, the, the piece that you're trying to engrave and not the laser. So once you're done with that, um, you can get your project. Now I'm going to try to align it the best I can over here. And so as you can see, this is actually fitting nice. And I think that I could even optimize even further by sticking this there you can see here there you go and who knows maybe I can put one more oh, I think I ran out of space now it's a little bit too much yeah this is not going to be but actually actually Now, bear in mind that um, this is not going to be very precise. You must uh, take into consideration that you will still have uh, one, two millimeters of misalignment. So don't trust it in an absolute way. Don't take for granted that that's going to do exactly what you want. But it is a very, very, very good approximation and you can easily locate part without problems. Now, the other interesting thing that you can do when you have this, for example, is that you can put any shape under anything and this can uh, take the outline of it. And so to do that, over here to the camera control, you can click on Trace. And as you can see over Trace, you can see that this has been tracing whatever is there. Now, there will be some work around here, okay? You will need to adjust it right threshold you'll need to play around with it now this is beyond the scope of this video but it is something that is possible and so you can uh, actually draw something you can put it there and then you can basically scan it you can give it an offset and it can cut exactly uh, where it is all right all right as you can see the process is fairly simple the wizard is also self-explanatory, it's guiding you throughout the process, so you shouldn't encounter any problems whatsoever. And once you're done, uh, as long as you ensure yourself not to touch the machine and the camera or none of both relative to each other, then the things will remain unchanged. And you can enjoy the new uh, effortless way of working. So this will 
definitely increase your productivity. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any comment, leave them in the comment section below. Click the thumb up button below if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!